I wake up excited every morning. Well, almost every morning, depending on how much sleep I've got. But uh, I get up excited to learn more and take action, to see more access and opportunity in the world, regardless of where we're born, what colour we are born, and in particular for today, if we're born with a Y chromosome or not. Now, I, I was born with a Y chromosome <laughs> in Australia, very peacefully, and I had access to you know, my uh, right to health, education, my right to play as a child, and beautiful native Australian desert flowers. But, unfortunately, the same can't be said for this young Afghan refugee girl, who I met a few years ago whilst working in polio eradication in Pakistan. And I think it's about time that we can fix at least one of the small inequalities that she faces, which is gender equality. And so hopefully we can go on a little bit of a journey with me as a five-year-old with my little flower through to today, where I still care about the world just as much as I did as a five-year-old and working towards gender equality. See, I grew up in a large family. I'm the youngest of six children in my family. And I grew up loving sports and in a pretty typical Australian kind of way, as you can tell by my beautiful accent. <laughs> or my lack of dress code. <laughs> and, and, um, and so from, from that time, you know, I, I knew not to be mean or abusive towards women, but just by having been brought up as a male in Australia, and I think pretty much anywhere in the world, when it came to gender equality, I just didn't get it. See, it first took me to have the lens of uh, inequality put in front of my eyes before I could see it in other parts of the world. And I first got that lens of inequality in 2001, when I travelled to uh, a small mountainous country in Central Asia called Kyrgyzstan, also one of the hardest countries to spell <laughs> in the world, only one vowel in all of that. Um, and I went there to go and climb mountains. But whilst I was there, I also decided to do some volunteering. I ended up volunteering in a beautiful city in eastern Kyrgyzstan, surrounded by mountains and next to a crystal clear, clear lake, Lake Isakul. And, and whilst I was doing this volunteering, I always say that my education started the day I finished university because I had some of my biggest life lessons, impressions and inspirations from this amazing group of women and one of their grandmothers. So these, we were all 23 years old, we were all teachers, but I felt that I was so immature and lacking in wisdom compared to these amazing women. See, they, they, they knew how to look after themselves, but also the people around them. And they did this all on the salary of 40 US dollars for one month. And so that meant they were incredibly resilient, resourceful, they knew how to build community around them. And these are qualities I've always tried to continue on with me ever since then. But this wasn't so much an issue of gender uh, inequality. A bigger insight came to me a few months later when I was working as a teacher in South Korea. And my salary was 40 US dollars for one hour. And I remember at the end of that first week of working, and the salary, and the, sorry, the money was in my hand, that it really hit me. I just thought, thought, well, hang on, why? Why does the world work like this? You know, I didn't work longer, I didn't work harder, and I certainly wasn't smarter than my friends in Kyrgyzstan, who just taught me so much about life. Basically, the only difference was, was that I was born where I was born, and my friends were born where they were born, having different access and opportunity in the world. And so ever since then, I've continued to ask myself that question of why, and to do my best to learn more and take action, to see more equality, access and opportunity for anyone anywhere, again, regardless of where they're born or what gender they happen to have received or identified with. And I think it can be that easy, and I think it's about time that maybe we can all join in to do these things. And so since 2001 in Kyrgyzstan, I've been extremely privileged to travel to more than 85 countries around the world in the last 15 years, working in social justice in many, many different ways. In fact, the three hardest questions I get asked is, what's your job, where do you live, and how do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> and I have no simple answers, especially for my poor mother, who still, <laughs> still asks me those questions. <laughs> but, um, but once I had this insight into inequality, I started to notice it everywhere. And one of the biggest um, inequalities I soon noticed was my ability as a young single male travelling continuously around the world. And that was a combination of having been brought up in Australia, having access to income and, um, and the privilege to do so, but also as a male. Because I always felt the travel that I was doing 
was always just a bit easier, or maybe with less concerns and fear than if I'd been a female. Ultimately, I felt like I had a sense of, uh, a greater sense of freedom and didn't have to have as many concerns going off hiking in the mountains by myself, sleeping on the floors of strangers. And I never once had to read up on the next country I was going to to see how well they treated young single males, which there isn't in Lonely Planet guidebooks, but there are for females, unfortunately. And so my point here is, is that women, you know, women were doing what I was doing, but I was probably just doing it a bit easier uh, with a little more freedom. And it was society around me that was really dictating the way I approached travelling, the trust I put into people and my perceived risks. When really travel considerations, it shouldn't matter if we are male or female. And something I've noticed across the board in all my years of travelling uh, in many, many cultures is my privilege as a male. You know, the freedom for me to be able to travel, as I've just mentioned. Um, less societal pressures to get married and have children. Uh, as I say, this is 38 years old without children and unmarried. And also not having to face extra challenges in a male-dominated world. And so, you know, really society and the way we are brought up has a significant impact on gender roles and equality. And so I always had to kind of deconstruct my privilege as a male for me to better understand um, what it means and the way that I approach the world. And it doesn't have to be this way. There's no reason why females should have more fear walking alone at night than a male in exactly the same situation. Women shouldn't have to face extra and endure, sorry, endure extra challenges to rise up in patriarchal systems and structures. And I think it's about time to do anything in the world. It should not matter which body parts we do or don't have. And I honestly think it is that simple. So what are some of the solutions, especially for males, to work towards more gender equality in the world. So I, I, I created a concept that helps frame these big issues um, like gender equality, but also to think of practical and tangible actions for them. And it's called teaspoons of change. And these are personal choices, decisions and actions that have a positive impact on people and the planet creating positive change. It's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Just remember the teaspoon. But for me, I'd always been taught, you know, what are the things that I can do for others without ever really having to look at the things I do myself? And I think Teaspoons of Change gives us the opportunity to double our positive impact in the world by not only looking at the things that we do for others, which is great, but also the things that we can do in our own lives, the way we approach world and, and society and the choices that we make on a daily basis. And so the concept starts with ourselves as individuals looking at a multitude of small but significant actions. And I kind of refer to this as like a piece of paper, using both sides. Using one side is good, but using both sides is so much better. And that's kind of a teaspoon of change as well for the environment. Um, and so I'll share with you some examples for me personally of my teaspoons of change for gender equality. So it took me a long time to kind of break through my privilege as a male and to really understand it. And I remember I resisted at first, justifying it to myself, well, men get it tough too, so why should females get special treatment? But as I spoke to females, listened, and really started to analyse society around me, I finally began to understand and realise women aren't asking for special treatment, they're only asking for equal treatment. And that was like almost an epiphany for me. And all the women are going, yeah, of course, that's right. <laughs> Another one for me was to undo society around me. And this is quite tricky. You know, I had, had inherited all these white male ways of thinking and doing. I really had to sort of undo them and, and try and fit back into the world around me that does that. And that's something that I try and continue to do even today. And I hope for males it can start today or continue to move you along. Because it's about time we did. But it is a bit difficult task to unpick all those sorts of things as we go along. Um, for me, I had the, you know, there's so many little lessons that I had to tune myself into to better see gender equality, like ensuring I had female perspectives in my life, the things I care about and the things that I do in all, in all aspects of my life, personally, professionally, academically and socially, all of these different factors. And also, you know, I had to really ask myself, am I just, you know, thinking about these things or am I actually acting on them? I've been to gender equality workshops in a number of different countries around the world. 
You go and get all the right facts and figures and all the, the vocabulary that you're meant to learn with other males and, okay, yep, good, now we're gender equality because we don't say this and we do say that. But it didn't always translate into mindsets and attitudes or when we get home later that night. And so our big challenge is to go beyond the words that we change and put it into action. And my friend Hilary from an organisation, she's a founder of the Female Voice, I think puts this directly but beautifully when she says, real change comes when we challenge the things staring us square in the face. I think that's a, a very direct but beautiful thing to say. Um, and so for me to help me in all of this, I also use a little tool of analysing my thoughts, my actions and society around me. And it's my balance of help versus harm for gender equality. So for me, an example of a harm is often to speak too quickly, too often and without ensuring female perspectives. When my teaspoon of change of help needs to be make sure that there are female perspectives and inputs in group conversations and decisions. Another help for me is a pretty simple idea, but I think it has quite a, a big impact in the world. And that is to know good people doing good things in gender equality. Um, I make a point of knowing lots of great people doing great things for gender equality. The He For She campaign with Emma Watson. Um, Orchid Project, who's looking at eradicating female genital cutting. Uh, Fair Agenda from Australia. The Female Voice, as I mentioned before. Seven Women in Nepal. And many, many, many others. And always locally and globally. And I'm sure the room is full of people as well who are doing this. So our task is to get to know them, support them, and importantly, share them with others. So these can come from government initiatives, NGOs, movies, social media, all these different areas. And so our point is to make sure that we get to know them, uh, support them, and share them with others. So one that I want to share with you today uh, that looks at good people doing good things is this year's World's Largest Lesson. So the World's Largest Lesson is one lesson each year for every school, teacher, and student in the whole world that's dedicated to equality. Um, I was in London a couple of months ago and I helped create the lesson for this year, which is called From Where I Stand, and it's dedicated to gender equality. And there's an important task in this lesson. Students um, fill out a survey, an anonymous survey, only depicting their country and their age. And then they have to put a tally of the decision makers, the gender of the decision makers in their life, community and country, according to this, uh, this survey. Thousands of students have taken part in this, uh, this survey already and the data was used for International Day of the Girl on October the 11th and it's still being captured. But unfortunately what this map shows us is that the global average of um, the ratio of decision makers in the lives of our students in the world is 3168, female to male. And so what this essentially tells us is that males are still the biggest decision makers for the students in our lives. And that doesn't make for gender equality. And so our challenge is to not just look at these statistics, but actually act upon them as well. Um, and so people can still participate in this lesson. So if you have access to students or schools, etc., then get them to add their voice to this important task. So we can highlight these things and most importantly, act upon them as we go along. Decision makers need data and they need excuses to make good choices. So let's provide them. Now, each of these little small but significant teaspoons of change actually fit into a greater context, a global context, the global goals for sustainable development and global goal number five, dedicated to gender equality. But here's the thing, is that when we act personally and locally, we are impacting globally and we're working towards solving some of the big issues for all of humanity but it has to start in our own homes and with ourselves. And in teaspoons of change is kind of the metaphor that I think that can help us get there. And, and for me to always think of new teaspoons of change and analysing society around me, I, I love this lyric from musician Michael Franti. And he says, are you a part of the pollution or are you a part of the solution? And I think this is a really good lens, the way to look at the world and, and see how we are going to be a part of this. And men, if we're not doing anything, then we're being a part of the, the pollution. I've got to make sure I don't stuff that up. <laughs> we're being a part of the pollution. So let's really analyse what we are doing and what we can do, because any action does count. Um, but just, there's a few things to keep in mind as we do this. Often we have to be brave in the face of backlash 
maybe from other men and probably even some females when we do stand up on gender equality. But just remember, women have had to endure this, often violently, throughout the course of history. My own girlfriend, Serafina, said to me that men are an important key to turn the tide on gender equality. We need to make sure that we raise their voice and in support so that we can all live in a world without fear and share the same opportunities and freedom. And so that conversation with my girlfriend, I think, is a good starting point for all conversations, to be open, brave and honest. Men, we need to really listen and learn on what we can do for gender equality. So we can see that in our own homes, in our workplaces and in society in general. Um, we also need to embrace and celebrate positive shifts in our society. And I think a great example of this was last year with uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau when he ensured gender parity across his uh, cabinet. And reporters said to him, why? And his simple answer was, because it's 2015. Well, it's 2016, so it's about time we saw gender parity for all cabinets and society. And there's a formula that I love to use with Teaspoons of Change in today for gender equality, and that is to know that any action, even small actions, multiplied by lots of people can and will create big change. And this is how we solve some of the biggest issues in society, it isn't just by clicking our fingers and making it happen, but being a part of that change, teaspoons of change at a time, in particular for gender equality. So as we look back at this photo of the young Afghan refugee girl, you know, it's about time that she and all other females grew, uh, were born into and grew up in a world with the same access and opportunity that was available to me as a boy more than 30 years ago. I hope we can all add our little teaspoons of change because it's about time that we work together to make gender equality reality. Thank you very much.